Scenario. The zombie apocalypse has finally occurred, fulfilling the dreams of preppers and mad scientists alike. There's zombies everywhere and they mean business. Very similar to Walmart on Black Friday. So there you are chilling on the throne trying to talk to a guy about a horse, or out and about in the city looking for supplies and you encounter a zombie horde. You clearly need to deal with the zombie threat. The question is, what do you choose? A. The tried and true machete. B. The 9mm problem solver. Also a very popular choice. C. The Ordnance Lab favorite, the Molotov cocktail. Or perhaps you want to go with something more exotic and you choose option D. The nail bomb. Hello my friends and welcome back to Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake and I watched a bunch of Michael Bay videos so I'm basically an explosive expert and you don't have to question that. For our returning viewers, welcome back. And then for our new viewers, hey, welcome to that corner of YouTube that's somewhat interesting and entertaining. We like to try to combine the two. We try to keep things entertaining around here and because we incorporate both uh, educational aspect and as well as just, you know, pure, you know, unadulterated dopamine rush of blowing stuff up. So if you are a new viewer, be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well with the, the notification bell because, well, YouTube is a little weird that it, it's, no, uh, it's notorious for not letting you, everybody know that we put a new video out. I know a lot of people are commenting like, oh, you guys haven't put any videos out recently. We've been pretty consistent about every other week. We have a long video as well as some shorts and people are saying that they don't, they're not showing up. That's the YouTube algorithm literally just giving us the bone and really, it's really, it really sucks, but that's just how it is. All right, so what's the subject of our video today? Well, it's the Nail Bomb, which is a video game weapon that was featured in The Last of Us, which is a really cool zombie game with a really cool premise that was based these zombies on the cordyceps uh, uh, fungus, which is actually a real thing. It actually infects ants and causes them to become zombie, and I guess in the game it mutates and then causes people to become zombies, which is a pretty cool premise. And in the game, you can craft this nifty device using blades, Obviously some nails, a container, and some explosive, which is something that we have laying around here at the ranch, surprisingly, because, you know, we make destructive devices and explosive devices. Go figure! Now, these things are pretty gnarly. If you haven't seen the game before, well, we're going to show you all about it, but, you know, don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at one up close and personal. And voila! The nail bomb, which, like I said before, it's pretty gnarly. It's a can with a bunch of fragmentation, namely nails and knives we had to cut up. Which what brings us to a first point, this is not a practical device. In the game, you can easily use this as a grenade or as a mine, and that means that you can walk around with it, which means that you're carrying this somehow, and without a sheath, you're gonna make yourself a casualty because it's gonna stab you. Like, just making this, I cut my hands a ton of times through gloves, so can you imagine in a game walking around in a zombie apocalypse and you get stabbed in the back with this? Yeah, totally not practical at all. Anyways, we made several of these, and what we do is we're gonna compare two different explosives and then measure the performance. And we chose two explosives specifically, a monol and flash powder, because in the game, these are shootable devices. That means that it needs to be an impact sensitive explosive, and we chose a monol and flash powder because those are easily made in an apocalypse scenario. Can't really ex uh, expect a lab to pop up and start making primary explosives and secondary explosives in a uh, consistent manner to make detonators and high performance grenades. So we're going to stick with what is most likely in an apocalypse scenario. The other topic I want to address is that there is no real guidance to make these. So I know a lot of people were going to comment or have already commented before they're on the, in the short, namely like, Oh, you need to do this or need to do that. Well, I don't really have any type of book or instruction manual to make a nail bomb because the video game is just simply, you take a bunch of uh, components, put it together on, in the game and voila, you got a nail bomb. So we did this as best we could to be as clone correct, but there's no real clear cut guidance. So, you know, I, to my best abilities, I think I got the nail bomb pretty spot on. I'm pretty sure somebody in the comments like, I am the expert at making nail bombs. I've been making them for, you know, however. I'm like, hey man, if you know how to make these better, shoot your info my way or make a video yourself. So welcome here to the back part of our facility. Normally this is only used for hunting and stuff, but we're expanded into a legit ordinance rain, but guess what? It's freaking August in South Texas, so we're all sweaty and nasty, and there's probably a great thing that you can't smell through YouTube because, woo, we've been out here all day working on that. Someone was crying in the comments section about, like, we don't look good, it was a bad look or whatever. Well, we're not like, you know, Brandon Herrera or Grand Thumb or all these other guys that have a full production crew of minions to go out there and work, and I'm sure there's like a hairstylist and everything else to make sure that Brandon's flowing 
blocks are just perfect. Well, we don't got that. It's just Jake and I out here sitting with Allie back at the place, at the office right now. So apologies to whoever's gonna get upset that we're actually working here. We've made some gnarly stuff here at Ordnance Lab, but this has to take the cake. Jake's already taken a couple for the team and getting his hand all cut up and everything else. It's made his love, love life less, <laughs> less happy for him, but he'll recover from that. What we're going to be doing, we identified in the game that there's going to be in a post-apocalyptic scenario. That there's only going to be probably two types of explosives available to the survivors. You're going to have either flash powder or a monol, which is just basically tannerite. And so what we have right here is our tannerite charge, and we're going to see what this gnarly thing does on our targets that we've set up out there. We selected a nice patch of terrain in our back 40 to do this test, as it's going to throw frag everywhere and we don't want it near our main driving paths. Exothermic sent us this flamethrower that we tested out in a previous video. They work great for clearing out the grass. Way more fun and easier than mowing. If only homeowner associations saw things our way. We set up three Ipsic cardboard targets to measure the fragmentation generation from the nail bomb. The targets were set up around the nail bomb to see what kind of fragmentation would hit a group of converging zombies. In addition to someone crying about us, sweating, and actually having to, I don't know, put in work in South Texas, we're surely to get someone crying about, oh, they're only using a Nipsic target. Sorry that we're still kind of on a broke budget. If you'd like to be our sugar daddy, then get us a bunch of those ballistic targets, man. Hit us up on Patreon. We would love for someone to sponsor us getting those who could actually test it. Anyways, back to the lecture at hand. So in the game, there's two ways that they're employed. There's either as a thrown grenade, which, eh, that's a little bit risky, I would say, or is basically a command de detonated landmine. And so what we're gonna be doing here, we've got our three IPSC targets and we're gonna be evaluating, hey, what's the fragmentation pattern on them? We're gonna see, again, these simulated zombies. This isn't gonna show what the blast damage would do, but who really knows what blast damage would do to a zombie? It's a zombie after all. Um, so we're gonna check though again, just seeing what that fragmentation pattern looks like and how effective we think these weapons would actually be in real life. Oh snap, is that the ATF guy over there? Better put this away in our Type 3 day box according to all the ATF regulations. Anyways, friends, especially those of y'all of our great friends at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police who are always the first people to call if you're upset with what we're doing. Just a reminder to not do this right here, this at home. All of these devices right here are destructive devices under the National Firearms Act and it's also involved in explosives material. Now, thankfully, we have a license to manufacture destructive devices and explosives and we're also a special occupational taxpayer with our good old friends at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives and wanna make sure that yes, the FBI, the Secret Service, the Department of Homeland Security, all these folks, they already know what we're doing, trust me. But if you wanna call them for whatever reason, to waste their time or whatever, make sure, again, you always start off with our friends at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We'll make sure we thank Apex Armor for providing us this battle rattle to keep us safe whenever we're blowing stuff up. Fire in the hole. All right, guys, again, my apologies that I don't have the flowing hair like Brandon because we don't have a production crew or a nice air-conditioned trailer for me to wade in while the minions do all the work for me so I can go on camera and look all pretty like Brandon does. Anyways, back to the lecture at hand. So what we did is we saw this is actually a pretty good weapon. We did a video about a week ago for short and I weren't that impressed by it. This one right here actually is. It's probably hard for y'all to see on camera, but all these targets got some pretty good hits that were in vital areas. You can see some of the hits down here to the lower extreme. Well, you probably can't see it, but there's some there. Um, and also up in here, again, if this would have been on a zombie, we don't know what kills zombies, but if you were a human, you'd probably have a pretty bad day um, from there. We've got a large chunk down here, which definitely would have been a bad news um, event for him. Also some stuff up here. And on our final contestant, this is funny that it actually got damaged. It was just hanging on the, uh, the board like that. It's got damage here and here and also uh, from a uh, nail, but also over here. So again, it's probably not as good as a real fragmentation grenade, but it provided pretty good damage from what we could see. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and recock and we'll try it again with using the flash powder based one. Our kids, body armor is very important for something like this right here. So make sure to check out our friends there at Apex Armor.
Fire in the hole. Well, hopefully we didn't start a fire this time. The flash powder nail bomb had a far larger explosion despite it being less powerful than a monol. The flash powder charge managed to do about the same amount of damage to the targets in comparison to the monol charge. One of the things that we were a little bit worried about was whether it would actually throw any fragmentation or if we'd have anything to be found. Turns out we did. And what's funny is that uh, they don't show you this in the movies, but whenever you have something that ha is in an explosion, it gets extremely hot. So you've really got to be careful whenever you're picking up fragmentation after a detonation, because I've burned my hand more than once. Um, so this is actually one of the scissors and it's still pretty hot. So that right there gives you an indication of, you know, how, how actually um, hot that, that fire from the explosion is. And also just how gnarly some of this stuff is and it survived the explosion. So let's take a look at some of the mother targets. All right, well, homeboy's running around like a chicken with his head cut off, literally. Um, all right, so we got some damage here. We got some uh, impacts here and up here and also here, but we're not seeing like a huge knife kind of thing, like a, a blade went through or something like that. Our next contestant, oh, that's a pretty gnarly hit right there. That could actually be from one of them knives. Um, some more hits over here and right here. I think it's safe to say that, well, again, we don't know what it actually takes to kill a um, zombie, but if it was any way related to a human, it would probably be having a really bad day right now. And here's the other one that, well, looks like it apparently probably fell off from the explosion, went boom, and it fell over before the fragmentation could hit it, or it just got lucky and managed to survive. So we've done our two tests with the weapons to show what they would do for fragmentation. Again, we did it first with the ammonal or tannerite based explosive. Then we did it with the flash powder. We showed that it's actually, hey, more effective than we thought it was gonna be. It was more effective than the previous test we did for our YouTube short. Well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little bit of a different test, which is gonna test more of what we think is gonna be its effectiveness. And we're gonna be using a different target than just those boring old Ipsic ones. Okay, so we determined that the ammonal and flash powder based uh, nail bombs were pretty darn effective. Far more effective than we featured in our short video that you can see in the link here if you really want to check that out. I highly encourage you to because it helps us out. But we didn't get much performance out of that nail bomb and these ones were a whole lot more effective. The Ipsic targets are smaller than the wood targets we uh, used in the shorts video, yet we got a whole lot more fragmentation. And I made them all about the same, so, well, they are improvised devices, so you can't really get tons of consistency out of them. I'm using different brands of soup cans and different knives, roughly the same amount of filler. So there is gonna be a little bit of variance between each nail bomb. So that takes us to our next experiment, which is we're gonna set up the nail bomb under an ideal condition to get the maximum amount of fragmentation onto the target. And what I mean by that is if you noticed before, we were setting them off on the ground and the targets are higher up. We were hoping to get some of those knives to fly out and hit the targets, but we haven't had any luck on that one. My theory is because they're getting launched. And in the game, the original nail bomb's got a bunch of them sticking up, which is pointless if it's set up as a mine. If you throw it, maybe if it fall, falls horizontally, it might blast those into a target, but that's kind of a narrow blast. So what we're gonna do is set it up a little bit higher against a quasi-ballistic target. We obviously don't have the budget for these fancy ballistic targets that you see all the time on other channels because they got this massive budget and a whole bunch of, of sugar daddies paying for that. We're a little bit on a tight budget. And what we did is we took a mannequin, filled it full of jello, roughly converted it into ballistics gelatin. And what we're gonna do is set it up so that we can capture some of that fragmentation if the grenade were to go off at roughly center mass of the target. The idea is we're gonna try to capture as much of that fragmentation in there and see if this, ideally, how much damage can go to a target. Because, well, if you're taking out zombies, Traditionally, well, I mean, the de facto way of taking care of a zombie is you're supposed to do some type of damage to the head, right? I've thought, played a lot of zombie games, and that seems to be the pretty much the quick way to end them. So we're going to try and emulate that scenario. Had you gone, had a nail bomb gone off under ideal conditions, would it really effectively tear up a zombie? This mannequin torso will serve as a solid analog to a zombie torso. Not like there's a standard on zombie torsos to begin with. We stuffed it full of thickened jello to simulate the guts of the zombie, then packed it in ice. Why? Because it's insanely hot here in Texas and literally everything is melting. Anyways, we built this wooden platform to hold up the torso and the nail bomb. The goal is to create the ideal scenario where the nail bomb detonates near the torso and see if we can get a better idea of the frag damage to the zombie.
The nail bomb did a solid job of gut checking the zombie. The Texas heat did not waste time melting our simulated guts either. It made for a very artistic and cherry smelling pool of zombie fluids. Sort of looks like the blob from the 1988 movie, The Blob. Talk about a traumatizing movie. The damage is clearly visible and would have been devastating had this been a real zombie. Though we are totally sure a self-proclaimed zombie expert will chime in, comment about how this would not stop a zombie, and the test was not zombie clone correct. You know who you are. By all means, comment away. Go for it. All right, now I want to make sure that I apologize to our more sensitive viewers. It may be upset that we're sweating here in an 108 degree day in South Texas, and you know we don't have our beautiful coiffy hair like Brandon Herrera. So again, I, I apologize if we can't live up to your dreams. But, so with this target right here, which by the way, that we got from our friend Cody with Weapon Genetics, a big thank you to him for making that happen. Jake had this great idea. Let's see what happened. We've got catastrophic, ugh, catastrophic damage down here, um, but it looks like we probably should have had it a little bit higher for it to actually catch into the fragmentation. We've been looking around and we've been surprised. We haven't been able to find any knives or large chunks of the scissors except for the one that we found the other day. So it looks like that again, for this weapon to work out well, it has to be a little bit higher, but we've been surprised actually with how good of a weapon it actually is. Our grand finale consists of a ring of zombies had they decided to gather around a nail bomb for whatever reason. They found a brain buffet or something. The zombie ringleader is this mannequin which will serve as our full-size zombie target. The rest just being silhouettes to measure shrapnel. Our supersized nail bomb is a one gallon paint jug, jam packed with blades, nails, and four kilograms of high explosive. This is a whammy charge. We can't show the entire device as YouTube would flag this video, so censored once again. The nuclear option nail bomb was placed a bit off center, but it really won't matter with the amount of explosive we loaded into this burrito of doom. This drone shot really gives you a better idea of how impressive the blast was. Slowing it down, you can see the shockwave traveling through the tree line. From our protected position, totally obscured from the blast, we still felt the thump hit us. The blast zone aftermath looks a lot like, well, Portland after some fairly peaceful protests. Our mannequin was surprisingly still standing, but lost its arms. Our GoPro managed to take one for the team. Fortunately, the housing absorbed the damage and not the GoPro. This camera was about 50 meters away and the tripod took a wicked leg hit. As for the targets, all of them got yeeted. Literally all of them. All the wood targets received massive damage. The cardboard targets definitely didn't survive. They were disintegrated to pulp. Even the surrounding trees got fragged. It's safe to say that the BBW version of our nail bomb is fairly effective against zombie hordes. Great Scott! Our mannequin was literally disarmed by the blast! <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Anyways, so normally we walk around and show y'all what the targets look like and you know what the damage is, but actually in this situation, the force of the blast was so strong that it just pretty much annihilated them. I mean, there's not much to show y'all. They were all knocked down. Um, the guy here, the zombie that was going to be our one to hopefully catch like how it would hit a body, um, received impacts here and here and also down in the groin. So again, we don't know how you would actually kill zombies in real life, but I think that we could say that this guy right here would be out of commission. And again, the force of that blast would have uh, definitely damaged any of the zombies before the fragmentation got to it. Hey guys, I got dressed up for y'all, not sweaty and stuff, just for that homeboy that wants us to have that grand thumb Brandon Herrera look going on. So again, hopefully y'all give me some good credit there in the comments section. But what did we learn by watching this video here? Lots of useful, le well, not really lots of useful lessons, but some interesting lessons. So firstly, we figured out that those nail bombs are actually a fairly decent weapon. They were able to go out there and cause damage to all of the targets and it probably doesn't work as good as like a traditional hand grenade or something like that but it sends a whole bunch of fragmentation flying everywhere in a fairly unpredictable manner but it does send it out there and also you get the force of the explosion. Secondly, <laughs> they ain't very practical. Trying to go around there, hell, 
just trying to fabricate it. Jake managed to cut himself a whole bunch of times and just the thought of trying to employ that and carry it around with you, it's definitely not at all practical. One of the, I don't play video games except for Grand Theft Auto. Gotta love some Grand Theft Auto. But um, I watched some of the videos of the video game being played and it shows a guy like, you know, sneaking around with it, and, like pulling it out of his secret little spot. Well, doing that right there would cause probably more injury to you than it would to the zombie. And then third, doing a ordnance style, you know, making it bigger Texas style, woo! Kind of thing. That right there worked really well. Whenever we replaced those improvised explosives, it would be ammonol and also um, flash powder. What we did is we used a real high explosive that probably wouldn't be laying around during the apocalypse, but luckily Jake and his science stuff was able to make that. We set it off and that caused a massive damage for our final apocalyptic scenario surrounded by zombies. And that's the conclusion of our video. As always, if this makes you mad, we already did the legal disclaimer, but make sure that you call the good folks at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and let them know that a bunch of yahoos down in Texas are belting bombs and putting on the internet. No point in calling the U.S. government because they're already aware of it. All right, well, we'll see y'all next time here at Ordnance Lab.